How's it going guys? Mike here, welcome to Mojo Group. So today I'm in the back seat of a Technum twin engine, the P2006. And this is an airplane I've covered probably a bunch of times on the channel. Uh, but this one is owned by Sling Pilot Academy. And today I'm gonna be flying with really great pilots. Uh, they're both CFIs here. And I basically, I'm just curious how this thing works. So if you wanted to get your multi-engine, this is one of the, the aircraft that you're gonna be flying to, to get your hours built up. Do you mind just introducing yourself as the, the pilots and co-pilot for today? Sure, um, in Anastasia, I am the student pilot. And here in Stanley, um, I am the instructor today. Awesome, so they're, my lives are in their hands today, so. Anyway, you guys enjoy the ride. Okay, and one of the cool things about the P2006 is you have a back door. So rather than me going in from the front, this is my entrance in. And here we are. Oh wow, there's a ton of lead room. But anyway, hope you guys stay and come along for the ride. Uh, we're gonna start off the engine fairly soon. And uh, I'm gonna be asking a lot of questions, so stay tuned. Torrance Tower, Twin Tech Num 302 number uh, 302 Charlie Alpha, holding shirt 11 left at Bravo number 2 for close traffic. Tech Num 302 Charlie Alpha, Torrance Tower, Roger, standby. So, this is like a typical practice day uh, for students, or is this uh, unique? Uh, no, it's a typical day um, just to stay in the pattern, let them get some experience with the airplane itself. Okay. Um, we do a lot of uh, single engine operations out in the practice area, um, which I've done before, but today's today's lesson was just pattern. Okay. So. Tech num 302, Charlie Alpha, wind 1006, runway yeah. 11, left, clear for takeoff, make left traffic. Okay, power 20, everything is green, and full power. Airspeed's alive. Sixty-five knots. Positive rate, gear up. A thousand feet. Okay, we're gonna turn base. Hey, it's Ron Fair, it's Ron from 559 at Delta Delta at the antennas for a northeast departure, and I got Romeo. And then just go right after hold it. Yeah. And props are forward. 70 knots. 75 is good. 75. And we have three green. Three green. Just check that nose where you want to control the descent with the power. Locking the throttle down a bit. Clock, clock, clock. Tech number two, Charlie Alpha, turn right on Texas sure. Hotel, contact ground. Uh, right at Hotel, contact ground to Charlie Alpha. So question, for you as an instructor, so Anastasia just went up, and what are you looking for generally uh, as she's flying, or what particular are you looking for in terms of um, that she is controlling her airspeed, um, her altitudes, adjusting as needed, putting down the gear and the flaps at the right time, setting up for a stabilized approach, uh, coming in. Um, yeah, just familiarity with the, the, the Technum itself. She's a uh, CFII, so she has a ton of time in the sling, so she has a lot of experience in the sling, knows that airplane, so now it's just transitioning to a new airplane, um, you know, making sure that she she knows how to uh all the power settings are and whatnot okay awesome Makes sense and anastasia for you um what how many hours do you currently have i have about 1700 hours <laughs> in this particular plane or just in general uh, in this plane i only have uh maybe Four hours, but in general i have 17. wow okay you're i don't know what you're doing here you should be with line somewhere. I was going to ask you, what is it, how is the transition, say from a slank that's a mistake to a standard yoke like this? Um, not 
not too bad for me because I used to fly the yoke in my early training. So it's kind of just going back to it and remembering it. Okay. And this is your first multi-engine or you've flown on there? My first one. Okay. And what's that transition like? Going from a single engine? It's very humbling. I, I love being a student again. Okay, Good. awesome. When you're flying a multi-engine, is there any unique way you switch fuel tanks, or it's just normal like you would in a single engine? Right, clear for takeoff, make right traffic. It's like normal. Yeah, you turn on the pumps and then you switch the tanks. Yeah. Uh, uh, Torrance Airport Information Sierra's current altimeter 2085 now landed. Everything is good and green. Release brakes, full power. Airspeed's alive. Sixty five knots, rotate. Positive rate right gear. Great right green. Ops. One, two. Uh, 84. 100 knots, actually. Uh, 85, it's a transition to a heavy yeah, yeah, in the base, and then 75 on final. Same off to our right. In sight. Okay, white. Top gear. All right. Turning right, base. Right. Request for right down with the pod. So fast. That's on two zero six zero uniform turn tower, Roger, and thank you for your patience. Right. Power idle. Just make sure you bring that power back in as we settle down a little more to cushion that. Just Roger. So is this typical, um, say, days of the week? Yeah, I'd say, uh, I mean, it's kind of hit and miss. You can expect certain times of almost any day to be pretty busy. We have uh, two other flight schools, busy flight schools, in the airport, as well as um, a lot of operations from Long Beach. So it doesn't really quiet down ever, um, unless it's real early morning yeah. or evening. Anastasia, I noticed the the rate of turn up there, like the first go, second go. For you as a student, uh, especially flying something with two engines, are you like does that come into play whenever you turn in, or conscious of you know how much you're you're turning the plane? That's just for me. I'm just curious because I like to know. That's uh. something that comes into play whenever you. Uh, what do you mean turning? Sorry. Angle of bank, like yeah, shallower yeah, bank. Yeah, 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 little wider patterns. Right. Yeah, it's definitely um, a, a bigger radius during the turn. So um, the airplane is bigger. It's got larger wingspan. So okay. um, you have to start your turns earlier. Uh, when you roll out, it's also, you know, um, a bit slower on the rollout just because just of the weight and the wingspan. Okay. Uh, more particularly, what I was thinking was, you know, being that there are two engines, um, I don't know if the weight of it feels different for you uh, compared to where your engine is sitting up front and now you've got on both wings. I wouldn't say the weight makes a difference. Um, you've got pretty, you know, almost symmetrical forward movement, so I don't think it makes it too much of a difference. Okay. You kind of forget that you have two engines after a while. Really? Yeah, I mean, you, you know about them, you just kind of, it's not, I kind of forgot, you know, that <laughs> we don't have one in front. I go, they're on the side. Yeah, the um, the pitch is a little heavier. The amount of pressure that you have to input is definitely more than the sling, um, but it's not excessive. It's a really light twin, so it's not an excessive amount. Okay, cool. And for somebody, I guess, training to go to the airlines where 
Because, for example, when I see airline pilots, when they pull on that thing, they usually use it in both hands. Uh, so is that something that you hear flying one of these, or that's, like, much uh, I would say that's later with bigger, heavier airplanes where you need to apply a lot more pressure to get the aircraft um, in the direction that you want it to go. This is relatively light, like if you fly a sling versus a uh, 172, the amount of control input you apply to a 172 is more so than you would a sling to get the same result. And so as you get bigger, heavier aircraft like the airliners like that, that um, I could understand them having to use, you know, both hands. Okay. Versus just the one, it, but this you're you're usually fine with just the one in this airplane. It's pretty light. It doesn't have a whole lot of power. So I was checking the speeds on the plane. Um, I noticed around 700. Uh, per minute on the climb. Six with the is at the east side down. Going on to the downwind, field. you always hit 100. So. Cherokee, four zero nine to Charlie Alpha, Torrance Ground, fuel pit taxi. Yeah, yeah, 100 on the downwind. Uh, via the ramp, uh, 1950. Um, no, I'm sorry. Just to kind of like, you know, play nice with the other traffic in the pattern, too. We we okay. could be going faster. Our gear extension is 122, and our first set of flaps is 122, but we want to, um, you know, be able to space ourselves with the other traffic in the pattern. Um, and then uh, we start slowing down once we go gear and flaps, uh, about 85. Uh, best single engine rate of climb is 84. So we just try and keep it around there. It's a good approach speed. And then final is 75. Okay, cool. And so now Anastasia probably added another hour to her. So what's typical for students? What's what's the curriculum like? How many hours do you have to uh, fly one of these to you know, get to the... Well, for multi-commercial, which is what our students are doing, uh, we base it about 15 hours, and that could, of course, change as with anything with all students. Some some learn quicker, um, and some take a little longer, so we like to average it around 15. Uh, it's a good safe number. Um, there's a, a lot of... Uh, different types of training we do with first just getting familiar with the airplane, uh, the twin engine aspect, the complex aspect, and uh, and then working into the single engine uh, maneuvers. That's what we base a lot of the time off of. So, But I'd say 15 hours or so. Okay. And there's, is there like a check ride or some type of exam? Yeah. Yeah, a check ride. Just like um, if you were to do your private or instrument, however, for the multi-commercial, you do not need to do a written, so it's just the oral and then the practical. Okay, awesome. Because it's an add-on if you already have a single-engine commercial. Add-on rating. Okay, going like this? Oh, yes, please. <laughs>